Every week, we're taking a closer look at a different weather topic, a deeper dive than what we can do within our daily weathercasts on KPIX. This week, I'm going to talk about something that most of us don't spend a whole lot of time thinking about, normal weather. Why is that relevant? Earlier this year, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, that's NOAA, and the National Weather Service updated the climate normal statistics across the country. These climate normals, which are updated every 10 years, are 30-year averages of climatological variables. It includes temperature and precipitation, which give us a reference point for comparing current weather against what's considered normal. This is the range of normal high temperatures for San Francisco and San Jose throughout the year. The Bay Area is unique in that we get a double peak of warmer temperatures. The first is in the summer, when the rest of the country is also at its warmest, but then we get another peak in late summer and early autumn. That's when the offshore winds are likely to boost both temperatures and the fire danger around the Bay Area. So this is pretty much the only place in the country where the temperature curve looks like this. We use this information every day in our weathercasts. This is a chart I showed last week as the inland heat wave was settling into the Bay Area. It's a tool that lets us put the current weather pattern in perspective, which is especially useful when extreme patterns develop. Climate normals also are important to people other than weather nerds. They provide important information for a range of economic sectors. They inform growers' decisions on when to plant and harvest crops and what crops to plant in the first place, how electrical utilities can expect energy demand by, to vary by season and by region, and in planning construction projects to avoid weather-related delays and maximize energy efficiency for any particular region. Back to those 30-year averages. Between our new normal period, which is 1991 to 2020, and the previous one, which was 1981 to 2010, warming was widespread across the United States, with the exception of the northern Great Plains, which actually cooled off just a little bit, the influence of that polar vortex that's recurred a few times. It's even more striking, though, when you take a look here on the left, the bigger picture, comparing the newest normals to data from the beginning of the 20th century. That's the oldest data that we have, the 30-year range from 1901 to 1930. So what do the U.S. climate normals tell us about climate change? Putting the words normal and climate together can seem like a foreign concept these days as extreme weather events become more common in our warming and weirding world. The new normals show us that even in the past decade, warming was significant in most places. With each decade's update of the climate normals, temperatures keep creeping up, a trend that's also apparent in the Bay Area. San Francisco's normals have increased by almost two and a half degrees since the beginning of the 20th century. And it's an increase of exactly two and a half degrees for San Jose over that same time period. But it's not just the statistic of normal temperature that's shifting. It's the entire spectrum of temperatures that we experience year round. A shifter of, two, of one or two, maybe three degrees, may sound like not much, but it pushes the edge of the temperature curve by the same magnitude. Extreme events on the edge of the spectrum become much more likely on the warm end. A once in a millennium heat wave becomes a once in a century event. A once in a century event becomes as frequent as once in a decade. Think back to the incredible heat in the Pacific Northwest in late June as just the most recent example. So the challenge ahead of us is to focus on bending this curve backwards, reducing carbon dioxide emissions to mitigate the rapid pace of warming illustrated by every new installment in those climate normals. That's exactly the goal of the Paris Agreement on Climate to limit CO2 emissions and curb the increase in global temperatures by decreasing CO2. Meeting that goal demands one of the largest global transformations physically, behaviorally, economically, politically that the world has ever undertaken. Fortunately, much of the expertise and many of the technologies needed to achieve it are already available and they're becoming increasingly affordable. That's the good news. That's it for this week's Weather Extra. Meteorologist Darren Peck is going to be in next week to cover another topic, and we are inviting you to play a role. If you have a weather or climate question, you can just email it to us. It's weatherextra at kpix.cbs.com.